Hello, welcome to Tech Dive AV Club. We're in Vegas Pro 18 and we're talking about a new Vegas Pro feature today and that is the ability to use and render out an Apple ProRes. So at first you could do some limited work with ProRes in Vegas, uh, but it was really under the guise of Magic's intermediate codec, which is kind of a ProRes similar codec, but this is real ProRes we're talking about here. So in this video we're gonna cover why that's important for Vegas, what that actually looks like for you in Vegas and kind of how to make some decisions, some educated decisions on using ProRes in your future projects. So let's get started. First off, uh, this is some video footage I've got from NASA's website. It's kind of my go-to ProRes footage. Uh, here is some 4K ProRes footage too I just grabbed from them. That's This is 1080p footage. Here's their 4K footage. I just dropped it in a project just now. Uh, for, for the size of screen and on my 1080p screen, it looks probably the same. But you can see both of it's playing pretty, pretty well um, and smoothly in Vegas. So that's the first thing you're going to notice is ProRes is just going to play better with Vegas because Vegas now officially supports it. So what is ProRes? Well, we're going to have to talk a little bit about Apple. So Apple isn't my favorite company when it comes to computer building, but they do do some cool things from time to time. One of those things is they made a codec that is just really good at saving information in a beautiful way. I have a video I'll link below about what codecs are and how they work uh, in, a, in a soft science explanation way. But the rough of it is, is there's two things about a video. Every video has a file type. That's how the computer looks at it to open it and read it. And a codec, which is actually the real kind of map behind how it's expressing the image. So a camera captures the image on the sensor, and the sensor has to save that image somehow. And it's got to make a lot of decisions. Does it throw away a lot of information? Does it keep a lot of information? Because not everything you're seeing, sometimes there's a lot more information than what you're seeing. So like, if I hit Alt-G here and I wanted to color grade it, you'll actually have better luck color grading in ProRes. I'm just kind of, you know, throwing the, throwing the colors around here. You'll have better luck color grading in ProRes because in ProRes, ooh, that's kind of neat looking. Um, in ProRes, what will happen is you have just more data to pull from the original video. The raw video, the actual video has been has been maintained. The information has been maintained better. That's called an intermediate codec. So editors like intermediate codecs because intermediate codecs, they're usually intra-frame, where inter-frame is where all the information is dependent on the other frames. But intra-frame is a intermediate style codec where the compression is all contained within a single frame. So every frame in, exists by itself individually mathematically. So it doesn't have to reference the rest of the video when it's being changed or manipulated, which is good for editing. H.24 codec that you're used to using and delivering to YouTube, uh, it's not designed to be used independently frame by frame. It has to look at the entire video itself. So when you cut it into pieces and things like that, it still has to reference the entire video to understand what the math of that frame is supposed to be. That is the skinny on, on like an intermediate codec and why it's important. It's not just about pixel uh, bit rate, uh, but yet it usually has a very high bit rate because it is keeping so much information. Uh, and so that's why it's great to edit with, and editors are a lot of times are expecting this. So this is not a delivery codec. It's very big. It comes in giant gig formats. So uh, let me show you here on the website that I got it from. Uh, in this, in this uh, NASA website where you can download it, uh, you can see the two ProRes versions here. One of them is a 1080p version, and it is 4.2 gigs, which is actually very big for this a four-minute video. That's about a gig a minute, a little less, but that's about a gig a minute. That's a pretty good-sized video there. But it's 15.8 gigs, 15.8 gigs for a single four-minute video that is a 4K resolution. So you can see ProRes is great for keeping things pretty but it's not great for keeping things small. 
delivery codecs are for that. This is only a delivery codec in the sense that you deliver it to other editors. You deliver it to production houses, things that are expecting a high-res thing that they're going to retouch later. So if you're going to touch it again, you need to save it, render it as ProRes. Uh, or it can be something else besides ProRes, but that's why ProRes is important. That's why it's important that Vegas has ProRes because now you can use this very common, very important codec type uh, and let's look at the render as. So if we take it and we render it as, um, there's, you're going to see some very important distinctions about it. You're going to see that there's the 422, the HQ, and the XQ, and you're going to see that there's different resolutions. There's 4K, and um, there's 1080p, and you're going to see that there's different frame rates. All right. So first off, let's talk about what this ProRes 422, HQ, and XQ means. There's a couple of different things going on there. Uh, these are just some kind of uh, templates pulled out for you uh, by Vegas. So what we're going to do, let's look at uh, this little chart from a website I'll link below. Premiumbeat.com has a thing called Everything to Know About Compression Ratios and they have this little chart here that I thought was a great chart I wanted to share with you. It's from Apple but um, now you can see there's raw here. We're not talking about raw. Hopefully raw support will come later on but uh, we're talking about just ProRes 422, HQ, and then uh, 444, uh, which would be like the XQ version. So X usually means like extreme and like extreme amount of information in the codec world. Uh, 422 uh, HQ would be like a small but still really high quality, higher bit depth, um, but same 422 compression ratio. We're going to talk about what that means in just a second. Um, and then ProRes, just 422, would still be a very pretty, very good intermediate codec video, but a lot smaller, something a lot easier to uh, uh, upload, download, and even edit with. Uh, so uh, the, you, you need to understand that these file sizes will be very different depending on what you pick. It's not just about the resolution of the video. It's also about which version, uh, of, co which version of the codec you want to use or compress to. Uh, and so let's talk a little bit more about what this number means. The because because some of that's the bit depth, right? So just how many bits of information, and that's a pretty simple concept. With more bits is more information. So uh, HQ versus you know, and the XQ version that you saw is just going to be more uh, a bit depth, and you can change that, customize that some in Vegas. But let's look at chroma subsampling. So chroma subsampling. Here's a here's a article all about chroma subsampling from rtings.com. Now these, this isn't the best chart ever. It's actually not a good chart, but it is a good chart for learning. Uh, it's not a good chart for how it actually works. Here's let, let's talk about it. So 444 is a number that you're going to see a lot, especially in the world of a ProRes. And so what that means is just for the grid of pixels it's looking at, for every four pixels, uh, it's taking four, uh, a subsampling of four individual pixels color and it's keeping that color for all four pixels okay so here's what a big perfect one would look like a luma luma means luminance the light the light value behind it how dark it is or light it is uh, for every pixel and then it takes the chroma chroma meaning color uh, so here's the chroma and then it averages those together it goes okay so this is how bright that yellow would be how bright that blue would be how uh, bright this this purple would be um, and as it makes those decisions now with a 422 as it's saving information it kind of goes okay what if I took that color data and I just applied it to two of the pixels now what it kind of does is, is it usually does some sort of decision making on whether it should average it or choose one or the other or something like that uh, but that's not uh, this is not really expressed here in the picture that's why I said it's not the best picture um, but it does show you kind of what's happening uh, that it will take two pixels and combine them. So 422 uh, takes less, uh, combines these pixels, but still keeps the same color data, uh, uh, the same brightness data. So it combines the color data, keeps the same brightness data. But with this chroma subsampling of 420, you've got uh, a lot less color data saved, but you still got the same uh, Luma data. So while this this is a good picture of what's happening um, a little bit under the hood something to consider though it's not just erasing a blue pixel and putting a yellow pixel over top of it it's making a decision about how to display these two color things in a way that your eye will still distinguish the color with a little bit less detail so it's not this quote-unquote black and white as this 
this chart is, but it does help you see how this pixel combining works and some of the information that you're choosing to throw away if you're uh, down rendering a codec uh, or if a codec already comes to you 422, uh, what's, what it's deciding to do with the pixels in the background. Now usually you're never going to really see this kind of color degrading. It's very minimal uh, on the grand scheme of things. Um, but it is there it is happening so let's look at one more little website this is apple's actual documentation about it uh and it's got all sorts of information all you have to do is google um <laughs> apple prores uh and you can find this little white paper they published and the chroma subsampling it explains more about it here in exact detail this is apple's words about it uh, it also has a ton more information and the math and things used but here is their chart of what a 444 information looks like and then kind of what information they're throwing away in a 422 uh, versus how they're getting it in a 420 like how they're kind of averaging the information of 420 and then a 411 but uh, this is just something that you can see some visualize the information information you're keeping and throwing away on a small level because that's how ProRes can really change its size a lot is by keeping and getting rid of the color. So if you're looking to color grade, you might want to keep as much color as possible. Um, but if you're looking to keep your file size smaller, you need to make some sort of compromise. So um, that is the compromises uh, so you can understand some of these decisions you're making about as you render it out. So now let's take a look again. You need to pick a frame rate that makes sense uh, for, uh, you don't want to lose frames because you're usually not trying to deliver it in a small frame rate. If you have 60 frames per second coming off the camera, you want to keep it at your 60 frames a second if possible. Uh, so you would want to choose 60 P that P stands for progressive 60 frames a second, which would be usually 59.94. It's the way digital maths work for how it considers frames and drop frame and things like that. But that's a conversation for another video. Um, but that's that number here. And then here's your resolution, how many pixels it's actually carrying with it, uh, 4k or 1080p. And then, um, here's your kind of bit depth and chroma sampling information. So you got your 422 right here being the smaller, uh, the HQ being more high quality and XQ being even more high quality. And you might want to experiment a little bit and figure out which one of these is going to work best for your individual product uh, and project. So like if you're making a feature film, you might want to you try to keep it as high res as possible the entire time, but you're probably going to only want uh, 24 frames a second. Um, you know, uh, there's all sorts of decisions you could make there. So thank you so much for watching. I'm so excited that Vegas now officially supports ProRes. I just burned my hand horribly with coffee. If you're looking for more videos like this one, like it and subscribe because we got lots of more Vegas creative software videos and editing videos coming out on this channel. Check out my links in the description because I got links on links on links on links of helpful things and information and commonly asked questions and things like that. So I will see you guys next time.